Welcome to In The Mix, a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. I'm on a mission to inspire and support you in reaching your goals in life and business. Do you want to know the secrets to growing a profitable DJ business? Tune in to hear real life stories from DJs across the globe who have grown successful DJ businesses. a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. Today, I have a special guest, Kid. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, Cold, but you know, this is New England. (laughs) I got my hoodie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, nice. I know the weather is so flip floppy, kind of like our industry. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) These days. Uh, Well, let's Let's hear, how did you get started DJing? What inspired you to start DJing? Oh, uh, eighth, seventh, seventh, eighth grade. I, I wanted to be in band when I was little. So uh, I signed up and I got in late. So the next available option was orchestra. So I went orchestra and I did all the string instruments. Uh, one day, professor took in an old beatbox and a record player and he started making beats. Then he started scratching over it. And while we were playing some, you know, some song and, you know, I was, I played a, a viola at the time and I was just like, what is that? And then he came over and he was like, this is what you can do. And I was like, oh. so I switched, I uh, went home and we had them old, big, uh, this was back in the nineties, eighties. So we had the big TVs and then on the top of the TV, it was a floor TV. Then on top of the TV, you would open it and they would have the record and the eight track player. Oh. on the big old console. I don't yeah. know if you remember those. Yeah. So I went I went back home. I think it was a Zenith or a Zenith. I don't know how you pronounce it. Or RCA. But I went back home and I scratched my mom's little piece. <laughs> um, got a wolf ass, but I won't forget. Uh, but that didn't stop me. I went back and scratched again the LPs and, and some of her eight tracks and got in trouble. And then for around my ninth birthday, uh, my mom ended up buying me my very own um, starter kit. It was... Gemini, as a matter of fact, it was those, it was a big box and it's a Gemini DJ starter kit. Uh, I don't even think they make those anymore, but you can Google them and you can you see them. You can see them and you're like, oh my God, that's crazy. So that's how I started. Yeah. So with the starter kit, what went in there? Discs? So, so in the starter disc, you had the two turntables and they were belt driven. So they were not, you know, fancy anything. There is a, it was belt driven. And it was a Gemini, I think it was like PT-01 or something like that. And then you had a two-channel mixer and you had basic needles and that was it. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. I actually, my first turntables were Gemini. I don't remember the, the model. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's amazing that your teacher ex- exposed you to that. Like yes. what a blessing. <laughs> it was, it, it was, it was, it was, it was something that I never thought about it because I wanted to be in band. I wanted to be the cool kid, you know, and I ended up being in the orchestra and then from the orchestra, I learned how to read music. So you get to learn uh, and, and appreciate music uh, just a different way. And then when they bring in, you know, to, to make it seem like we're cool as well, because you're eight, nine years old. So, you know, you're, you're in the orchestra and you got other kids like, haha, you're in the orchestra, you're in the, and we're in a band. So when he does this, it's like, well, we know how to read music this way. And aha. Wow. So that that did it for me. That's super cool. So were you pretty much self-taught from there on? From there on, yes. Uh, a lot of radio mixes. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff, uh, DJ Cool, uh, and then a lot of radio. And so I would record the mixes on the radio stations back with the cassettes. And if you didn't have a new cassette, you get the... Uh, uh, you get toilet tissue or toilet paper and then you put tape on the edges so that way you can record on the cassette back in the day uh, yeah yeah and, and then you put that in and you record and then I would sit there and record and then whatever scratch or any sound that they would make I'd go back and try to mimic it and try to copy it and then just try to make sure to blend it properly and, and scratch and, and and just teach my and taught myself till I, I was big enough to to you know figure it out and then YouTube came along oh wow yeah, I forgot about the part where you had to put the tape over the cassette. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I went was... 
when I went to Paris, I was recording off of the radio with cassettes because this was early 2000s because I hadn't heard that music yet. It hadn't hit California. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So and cool. There Thank was you. no there was no other way. That was the easiest way to do it. You go in Walmart and get a little boom box with a tape recorder and you just get a bunch of cassettes mm -hmm. <laughs> and just record. Yeah. I remember having these single cassettes that got melted and they would only work on one side. Like, I feel like I had like maybe Daft Punk around the world or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. If yes. that was... <laughs> like, it's a couple really funny songs from way back that I just love, like Diggable Planets. Um, yeah. That... Then you would have to be very careful not to leave them outside in the sun because then you would come in and they would be melted. You're like, my it's just like just spent ten dollars on a on a cassette deck and it's garbage. I know. I'm like, how did they melt? I obviously left them in the sun or on my dash or my car. Yes. <laughs> Everybody would just throw them on the dash. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't like this one. Throw them on the dash. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> the struggles, the struggles that we had to deal with. <laughs> I know we've come a long way. I'm like, yes. and it's cool to see you. I see you, you know, spinning your records online, and it's it's so yes. like nice to see just people playing records <laughs> it is it, it's uh some of these records i have not seen in uh plus 13 years something like that so this so some of them i are, are hidden gems to me too because yeah. they're songs that i forgot and then i'm overplaying them and then i drive my kids crazy because i'm overplaying them uh, <laughs> so i get to torture them with my music mm. um do your kids are they do they start to like some of the genres you like or are they like all new school right now they're picking up a, well the girls not so much tony he's picking up on all my old music so he's he's digging my old music the girls they're 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 more into the new school, you know, that new yeah, hip hop, rap, whatever you want to call it. So they're into that. Uh Tony, he's he's more he, he's more open minded. Yeah. That's cool cuz uh my daughter, she's getting really into the old school hip hop, the 90s, the 2000s, the good stuff, yes. the real stuff. When I hear her playing like Gangstar, I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's so cool. So do you remember like your first gig out with like a crowd? Uh, ooh, I was maybe 10. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was like 10 years old. Uh, I did our high school home or no, our elementary homecoming, something like that. It was like a homecoming party or a room party. It was some some kind of something. So uh, that's that was like my first time that um, I, I took the turntables and uh, the teacher that I had for for my orchestra class. I, I was still in in orchestra, and um, he was the one that actually was like, "You, I think you, this is good for you. You're, you're getting better at it. This this." try it and I'll be there and I'll help you along. So that was one of the first, that was one of the first that, uh, that I had. And then from there, it's just, it was like an, it was like a drug, you know, it's just like, I want more. It's like, I want more. And people feeding off of you and you're just like, I want more, I want more. Right. And it, for me, it was more of the, and I was in, cause the orchestra played, the band played. So I was just like in the in-between set. Hmm. That's all I did. I did maybe 10, 15 minutes, but that was just enough to be like, I want more. Yeah, right. I know that feeling of just that exchange of energy and seeing all those yeah. people dancing and vibing and reacting to the music. And right. That's the best. Yeah, absolutely. So at what point did you start to turn it into like a business? Uh, so I started turning. Uh, so I did nightclubs. Well, back in the day, I'm old. So uh, back in the day, uh, I started spinning on nightclubs when I was 16, 17 because uh, there was a thing called tardiadas, which were afternoons or evenings. Or, or So what ended up happening is you would get all these 15, 16 year old kids and they would go to the clubs. They would open the clubs up. And so there was no beer, there was no beer, no liquor. It was just soda, water, uh, you know, hot dogs. It was like a roller rink minus the, the roller skating mm. period. So um, I started there. And then from there, it just, did nightclubs, nightclubs. Um, and then as, when I got a little bit better, I had one person that said, I want m you to do my wedding. And I wasn't a wedding DJ. I, that was not, that was, that was not my thing. I was like, no, it's going to be boring. I've been to weddings before. 
gonna be boring. I'm, I, I always leave early and I'd rather hit the bar, the clubs. So I was like, so no. So they were like, no, no. I was like, but you're gonna DJ. And I was like, yeah, but I don't, I work at clubs, like like high energy clubs. Like, and he was, and a buddy of mine, he was like, no, no. It's like, so we're gonna have two DJs. Or the DJ is gonna do the, 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 you know, the ceremony and the I do's, and then you're gonna come in for the party. And I was like, okay. Uh-huh. So after that, it just, everybody was just like we like how you do things and it just I just grew unexpectedly yeah yeah I love that that's how it works you know I think a lot of times we do start with schools or kids or you know yeah. your own school if you're you know and then it just one gig leads to another gig to another gig yep. yeah so and I was very hesitant to to go and do weddings because I like I said I've been to weddings before and I've seen and you know it's they were boring back then they were not that fun i don't know if you remember though going to weddings they were not uh, they were not fun they were boring so you stick around and then you just leave <laughs> you go so all the kids would end up going somewhere else yeah honestly i hadn't attended very many weddings um before i started djing them to be honest now that i look back oh, wow. i mean uh, i felt like in our community not a lot of people were getting married um and in my family there weren't very many weddings and i mean there was one really oh, wow. standout wedding but i was like eight years old but um jerry garcia gave away my auntie at her wedding and that was like a big deal i mean <laughs> jerry yeah. garcia the grateful dead oh, yeah. <laughs> like that was like the only wedding I think I ever went to as a kid. <laughs> oh wow! And uh, we went. We went to a lot of weddings growing up. But we went to a lot of weddings growing up. Yeah. So and so my my you know my reality was it was they were boring. I didn't want to be there. I just go show up and you know say show face. That's how it was called back then. You go show face and you leave. And my mom would always be like, "Oh, you stick around." And I was like, "I don't want to." Oh, the kids are going to the party, you know, they're going to the club at 16, 17. I want to go with them. So, <laughs> Yeah. That's so cool that you guys had that, um, those venues. You guys didn't have that? You guys, you guys didn't have that? Yeah, no. Well, what, yeah. well, oh, what I did have is um, concert halls, venues, theaters, um, community centers that brought concerts for all okay. ages, but there wasn't a lot of DJing. I do remember one, like, one or two raves but that was it oh yeah and raves, then, raves were fun in the 90s um well yeah there were bigger raves in oakland that i got to go to where like yes. i walked in a room and sugar hill gang was playing and i awesome. had no idea they were gonna be there and i was like blown away <laughs> oh yeah yeah that, that, that's one thing i do miss about um <laughs> california so, <laughs> last minute parties <laughs> yeah like oh there's this warehouse and here's the yep. cutty, you know directions to oakland. <laughs> you're going to some oakland warehouse my dad thought i was yep. crazy he's like oh yeah you're going to oakland i'm like yeah i'm not scared <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> you go to oakland, like, go to oakland. <laughs> you oh, know yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome that you were able to like god do it at such a young age and you're still doing yeah. it i mean i i believe like I'm going to DJ until I'm not capable, like for, you know? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's how I see it. It's, it's well, and not only that, but back then we used to carry records. Mm-hmm. So we used to carry the milk crates and, and, you know, we used to carry milk crates and then from milk crates, we went to, um, uh, CDs with the, uh, with the first CDJs. I think my first CDJs was the CDJ 500s, the pioneers, the 500 too which was like the, the, the one that popped up with the anti-skip because mine had the anti-skip because the first version didn't have the anti-skip. So I was kind of excited to pay the extra three, four hundred dollars to have that anti-skip. So when people were at the yeah. bar and they hit your table, <laughs> they didn't lose the music. Wow. Yeah. So that was my first pair of, of CDJs. And then from there, so we went from carrying vinyl. So the way I see it is, I think we're, we'll be doing this for a long time because now we just carry, what, a thousand plus songs in a, you know, in a little thumb drive and yeah. you can pretty much rock a party with you know a 16 18 you know gig uh thumb drive yeah no for sure yeah and always have that with you just in case <laughs> yes <laughs> never know oh, yeah. never know when you one of the best gigs i ever had um or sets i ever had really was uh at a festival and they were still setting up the gear and 
I was ready and I had my music with me and I'm like, Hey, can I start playing? Just, you know, test out the equipment. And then I right. watched the crowd grow from like 10 people to like a thousand people just vibing off of the dance. That's floor. awesome. Like that was probably my best gig just to watch it grow like that too. That's fun to yeah. watch it just like from 10 to a thousand. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's, yeah. that, and then, but during, and those are the events that you don't think of having a camera with you at that time because you don't think of that stuff and then back then our phones were, were garbage i mean we were lucky if we had like one or two megapixels yeah. <laughs> of a camera so you know taking a you know i have videos from a couple of years ago and they're grainy and they're terrible they're all pixelated so it's like but when you watch it on the on the actual uh you know nokia they're fine but the minute you transfer it over it's just mm -hmm. it's garbage yeah so yeah yeah, back then it, it it was. Did you get any video or any pictures or anything like that during that time? Anybody there's, was there? There's like one dark photo of the back of my uh. head, and I have like cornrows. <laughs> it's like, and I'm leaning down like to the computer, and it's like dark. Yeah, I don't have much from back then, but now I'm on a mission. Like I I have a whole plan to have an assistant with me for almost yeah. all of my gigs. And one of their tasks is to be collecting content, collecting video photos um, yes, and all of that, because I think it is important for branding and marketing for people to see you in action. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely, absolutely. I always carry uh, uh, an assistant with me. I never go to weddings by myself. I never do events by myself um, unless I really, really have to. Um, I always try to take somebody with me. Um, and that's one thing I always tell them is like, take pictures, you know, take, yeah. take video, uh, take pictures, uh, and use the phone, use the camera, whatever you, whatever you can get to get different angles. Um, I have, you know, videos of me where it's just like, he's behind me and I'm in doing the introductions and all you see is my head <laughs> and I always, you know, you got to sit there and push him out there because they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to fault. So I just got to sit there and be like, dude, go. But, but that way, like stand there and just, you know, that way, not behind my back. You know, you'll get pictures and you're like, I can't use this, but I can use the audio. I can use something else. So but I'm like, I can't use the picture because all you see is the back of my head, and <laughs> me in the middle. And you're just like, dude, come on. Yeah. Uh, so I always try to take somebody with me. So definitely for marketing and stuff like that. Uh, my recommendation is if you have a GoPro, uh, I started doing this last time. I have a GoPro. And I have a stand, yeah. so I just I put it behind uh, the speaker and I just lift it as high as it goes, and I just point it down. So that way the GoPro, you know, the, the, the panoramic, it just so it just catches everything and it's just recording everything. And then you just record the whole set evening. Uh, and then I started doing is recording my sets, because that's one thing that I never did was record my sets. And then sometimes you get the awesome perfect mix or the you know the five or ten songs that are, that are just mashed up because you're in the zone then you try you come back the next day and you try to recreate it and it's not the same anymore it doesn't it doesn't have the same flavor it doesn't have the same sauce yeah. and you're just like but yesterday man if i only yeah. so what i ended up doing was every time i go on serato hit record yeah hit the record button yeah and another tip that my friend told me about is like you can go into your history and you can take yep. those songs that you played from that night or that set and you can put them in their own crate, create their own crate. I'm thinking about creating a master crate that's kind of like maybe like the club nights because, yes. you know, and then just take that history and move those songs and just add them to your club nights crate. Yeah, you could do a, you could actually move the whole date over. Uh huh. So, so if you have a, the whole date, just move it over. Yeah. But or like, the mix. But the mix, the mix itself, when you're in the yeah. zone and when, and when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. <laughs> and, and, and when you're jamming, you're jamming and you're mixing four or five songs together in like three minutes. Yeah. And then you're, you're like, man, I should have hit record. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Yeah. Another thing I did uh, at last weekend's wedding was I hit record for the speeches because I want yes. to be able to give them to, the, to them as a gift. You know, here's, here's yeah. your speeches because... Yeah, who knows what's going to come out in those speeches. It's one of my favorite yeah. parts of the wedding. <laughs> like... Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I do that as well. I sit there. I have a little task cam, a uh, little handheld, and I, I, I have a ton of them. Um, I normally don't give them out unless they ask, because normally I give them to the video person that's there. If they ask me for it, that's, that's normally what I give them to. 
is, is the videographer nice. uh, who is in charge of, of doing the video. Because sometimes they, you know, they hook up to the speaker or they'll hook up somewhere else and they won't get a clean feed. So mm -hmm. I'm all for sharing. I don't, I'm not going to get mad if they want to plug in anything. The only thing I ask is like, don't plug anything without telling me. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's only, as like, you can plug, if the music is playing, plug in, I don't care, whatever. I was like, but when you don't plug it, I always tell them, just let, just let me know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the last thing I want is a pop and you're, everybody gets scared. Oh yeah. I know. To be honest, I've only had, um, I had one videographer, um, and he was like, can I plug into your stuff? And I had never experienced that before. Cause I had never had a videographer at my weddings and it worked out, but then I learned, you know, check with the planner. Is there going to be a videographer check with yeah. that videographer prior what will you need from me? And let's see if I can provide you your right. uh, input or whatever output, whatever you need. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cause, and that oh, happened yeah. to me like last, last weekend, they're like, we're having a ukulele play, player for our first dance. I saw it in the planners timeline. I didn't think that they would need to plug into anything. Well, here they come. There's two girls and they want to plug in and they need mics yeah. and they need this. And like, I brought one random quarter inch cord that I wouldn't normally bring. And I don't even really know why I brought it. Well, they yeah. needed that one cord. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to plug so you gotta in have an emergency. To plug in my bag. controller. And I had one input for that. Like, like it was, wow. it was, it was kind of fate. It was like, wow, I intuitively knew or something like that was crazy. Yeah. And I, you know, I had a wireless mic that they could use, but but I didn't right. have the mic stand had already been packed up from the ceremony and <laughs> it was like in the oh, car. Wow. So, so you had to run and grab it. Yeah. Well, like my husband actually had taken, um, taken it because he drove oh, see, me. Here she is. Oh, <laughs> oh this is Penny. <laughs> she, she is. <laughs> Another thing I learned last week was like, this was, a um, at a, at a home, at a home on a farm and you needed four wheel drive. Well, no one told me that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so luckily I did a site visit, got my minivan stuck. It wouldn't make it up the big oh, no. hill. And so my husband drove me in his, in his all wheel drive. And, but so, yeah, I mean, just all the logistics of events, all the things we could prepare yeah. for on top of that, trying to collect content. One thing I want to say about collecting content is, you know, you, if you're filming with your phone, you might film whoop, this way for, Instagram stories or reels, but then right. you want it which way this way <laughs> yeah. for real video for like YouTube and stuff. So, or just grab a GoPro and you yeah. can find a good GoPro online for, you know, a hundred, 200 bucks, a cheap one. And yeah. you just, that's all you need. And then with uh, iTunes, or was it, I was it I music or I movie, is it I movie edited in I movie. Um, yeah. I've tried it. On, on my and on, on it, it it does good. I mean, some of the stuff it does it by itself. If you do the automatic, oh. and it does pretty good. It does yeah. the transitions and everything very good. Um, I don't use it too much because I use uh, Adobe more than anything, so uh, it's more creative for me. I, I love it. But if you don't want to pay that amount of money for <laughs> for Adobe, mm -hmm. use use iMovie on it. Yeah. Uh, and and get the the, the getting the content and, and the good quality pictures. Uh, is 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 very key especially with everybody uh trying to showcase things i just had a conversation yesterday for a lady uh who now i didn't even think about this so now for my proposals i never include pictures for my proposals it's always just the proposal and the contract and the agreement um so now she asked me if if there was pictures in it and i was like no because the pictures on my website so if you already went on my website why do you and she's like oh i just want to make sure that when i have i'm looking at i'm looking at what what each package is going to be, was gonna look like uh -huh. and I was just like you know what that's that's a good idea and I have to go back and 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 do and do my marketing all over again and add pictures and mm -hmm. for the setup for for the lights for for this for that yeah I yes. think people are really more visual now more than ever yes they, <laughs> they are look at her <laughs> she want love <laughs> Oh, she's like me she's like pay attention to me <laughs> she's like why am i not in the camera <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that's one thing it it, it, it i've, I've it, so this is like a, a, being in business and everything is ongoing learning experience it's oh, yeah. it's always learning and you can you can never get it right because somebody's always going to ask for a demo or um 
at first, I remember when I first started doing weddings, a lot of them would ask me if they could come to a wedding oh. or they'd be like, or when are you going to play next? Oh, well, I'm at this wedding. Oh, well, uh, can we come? And I always tell them, like, would you be okay if I were to invite a couple of strangers to your party? <laughs> oh, no. So well, yeah. Awkward. Yeah. No. I, 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 yeah. I feel awkward. I was like, so yeah, I don't think, I don't think this couple is going to approve of me saying, you know what? I have a, a bride that uh, she's interested. Can, can she come and check me out how I do my intros for, uh, for your wedding to see? And she's like, she's like, no, you got a point. So it went from that to YouTube and recording to now back to, well, do you have pictures mm. of on your contracts and everything? And, and that's one thing that it just never occurred to me was because you figured people did their research and if they want something, they're going to just, you know, they, they're going to get it no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you using like a CRM, like um, DJ event planner or HoneyBook or anything like that? I do. Uh, I use, um, so I'm transitioning from the old gig builder mm-hmm. to the Q system, uh, which is still, try- we're still trying to get the kinks out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I'm still old school. I still use paper and pen. I mean, I, it's, it's the best way I, mm-hmm. I got my notes. <laughs> I have, I have <laughs> my notes here for, for the wedding that I just quoted. Um, and then, and price and then price point, um, you know, I have, I have my little notes of everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you just, you, you, you can't go bad. <laughs> so <laughs> somebody calls me and asks me for dates or anything, it's mm-hmm. like, nope, this date is, is checked off. I'm, I'm booked this date, this date I'm done. I can't do anything. Yeah. Uh, and you, you just can't go bad because one thing I was having issues uh, this week was getting my calendar to sync with my uh, Apple calendar. Mm-hmm. It was just not, not catching it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's too many calendar options and then you get to make one of you, one of them, your primary one. Yes. Um, I was just doing this with a friend. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Yeah. I just and getting them to sync it, getting, getting them to talk to each other. Cause if you put a one thing on the online planner, you put the date you expected a sync on your on your calendar so it shows that you're booked yeah. and that was the problem I was having is okay. I was having the problem of I would put on the calendar online that I'm booked and then I go back and check on my eye calendar and it said nothing it's okay. open yeah that's something I get to work on too I'm not that far yet but yeah. I did sign up for an online um, CRM because I wanted people to be able to sign the contracts uh, digitally yes because I'm, I, I have a, I'm a, I have a problem with printers. I've had like five and now I currently am just gave up and I just have the local computer place print for me. But I realized a lot of other people have this issue in my area yes. and they were like, can you print it and send it to me? And I'm like, I could. And then I'm like, okay, I, it's time to go digital for me. And it will yeah. help me stay organized because I do have notebooks and then I do have Google sheets and I use the Google calendar and I have yeah. a system and I even had like a wall size post-it and I had little hearts and I had each couple in them because I wanted to like, I wanted to see it. And I just wanted, it was like my way of just like appreciating, like there's my work, like there's my right. couples, there's my gigs. And then I was like, I want to fill all the hearts. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. And, and then, well, you can, what you can also do is um, you can set up your contract. If you, if you do it on your Microsoft, you can upload it onto Adobe and DocuSign. So DocuSign is, is free. It won't cost you anything. So that's something that you can also do. So that's one thing that I sometimes do as well is if they don't want to have, I have clients that just want regular piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, you know, that's the, the trouble of like, all right, well, you still have to sign a contract. And I'll just upload it to DocuSign and, and you sign it. And once it's up there, then the minute they sign it, it's electrical signature. They record their IP address and everything, the time, everything. Uh-huh. So the minute they sign it, you get the, the notification as well that they signed it. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, I've been moving more into more like, I don't know, more technology but I feel like my clientele is not moving with me <laughs> like, yes but everyone's so yes. different but it's like I have a custom app where you can request all your songs and do your timeline yeah. but they're not using it and I'm like okay I think I need yeah. to help them walk them through it more I need to like you know hold their hand a little bit more or right or <laughs> like- right exactly so what I do is I'll send uh, as an attachment the, the the wedding planner and then I always tell them if if you don't want to do it on a piece of paper, 
uh, you can just do it online. It's easier. And nine out of 10 times, they're like, nah, we just printed it out. And, uh, and they'll send me pictures. And then I, now it's my heart getting it to print from my phone because now it's a picture. So I got to sit there and print it oh or transfer God. everything yeah. on, onto the uh, online planner. So that way I can send it to them and, and have them re revise it on, 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 the, on the planner. So yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah, and this is like that behind the scenes stuff from our jobs that our clients are yeah. seeing when we see people talking about, you know, you might book us for eight hours of music, but we're spending 20 hours or more on yes. an event. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's one thing a lot of people, I always tell everybody, it's like what you see four or five hours of us, but you don't get to see behind the story, all the, the music organization that we're doing, all the planning that we're doing, all the moving the songs from A to B, making sure that we have them in the right order for a ceremony, your, your, you know, pre-ceremony and then your ceremony and then your introductions. And then sometimes I get introductions for weddings where they have six, seven couples and each couple wants their own individual song. Oh, wow. And sometimes they'll be like, well, I want this, I want to come in at this point. And I always tell them, well, you have to tell me the minute and the second. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. Or the phrase is the first phrase, second phrase. Because if you start talking musicality, they, you lose them. So I, at, at first I used to be like, was it the first phrase, second phrase? Oh, I don't know. It's like on the one minute mark. All right. Well, listen to it. Go on, go on iTunes, go on whatever and stop it where you want to start. And mm -hmm. I'll have five or six. So a lot of times we have to sit there and do all those cue points or do a big mix of everything. Yeah. So that way, by the time we do the introductions, you know, we don't <laughs> uh, call somebody else on somebody else's song and then just mess up the whole process of it. Because there's no redo. Yeah, you can't redo it. You can't say time out, cut. You know, let's try this again. You can't do that. I wish we could. Yeah, but we can't. Yeah, I don't get many weddings where they want the whole bridal party uh, introduced. Oh wow! I'm glad <laughs> to be honest because <laughs> you get into these names and you know these pronunciations and yeah. Oh my god, I don't. It's just not popular where I'm at. So oh, you're lucky, lucky. I'm, oh, that's one thing that we do get. That we do get those a lot where they all want to come into a separate song. Uh, and then a certain at, at the you know at the hook or the the beginning of the song or sometimes they just want the the instrumental part and you're just like <sighs> you're making me you like, say why yeah <laughs> or sometimes and, they, and sometimes the kids will come in and so you have to play like clean versions of everything and sometimes you cannot find a clean version of something mm -hmm. yeah. so that's that's with some of this new rap style that you know we got to sit there and make our own edits because you know there was no there's no clean versions of it uh, mm -hmm. oh yeah oh yeah and then even the clean ones aren't clean <laughs> exactly oh i was listening to i forgot what what song uh, my daughter was showing me and the whole time i was just like this was this is on the radio like, like how is this even clean <laughs> like this yeah. is not clean yeah yeah, it's, it's interesting for sure. You know, you were talking about how, you know, we're always learning and growing with our business. And just yes. for me, reflecting back on when I wrote my book in 2018, which That's thank it. you so much for reading it. Um, so much has changed. Like I charge like 500% more than I did back then. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. And like, there's so much that has changed so much that I've learned. I've been thinking about writing a revision or maybe a second book. Um, Cause it's like, it's a fun experience <laughs> writing a book and, um, but yeah, so it's like never ending growth and. So. Oh yeah. And, and, and not only that, but people don't realize is equipment is, is, is 90% of our expense is equipment. I mean, People are paying, you know, two, three thousand dollars for, you know, just for one piece of gear. Mm -hmm. uh, and people, people don't think about that. People are like, yes, I can go buy, you know, a piece of gear that's going to cost me five, six hundred dollars, but then it's going to last me, what, a year, two years. And then I have to, you know, buy another one because something's going to break or it's going to be outdated and it's not going to be supported anymore. So people don't take into consideration that we spend a lot of money on lighting and, and, Cables alone, I mean, you get the, the expensive uh, uh, gold tip cables, you know, you're, you're spending, you know, $150, $200, you know, for 15, 20 feet. Wow. People don't think about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you and I had talked before about you helping me with my website. Oh, yes, so, yes, um, yes, yes. I'm just curious, <laughs> we could get into that on a different call, but I am curious, um, like, 
what do you feel is important to have on the homepage of your website? For, for me on my homepage, so because I am bilingual, so I do uh, Latin market here in Boston. Um, and I'm doing it for what, 10, 10 plus years, something like that now. Uh, so for us, what I see as, as being is visual, eye candy. You gotta have eye candy. So on my website, I have the minute you walk in, there's a video playing in the background of uh, people dancing and having a good time. And it's, it's eye candy. It's, and then from there, at the bottom, it goes to a, another video, another layout. Uh, and then there's always the key actions of, of book here or inquire here or uh, just, you know, telling you, you know, like this can be your event. This can be your wedding. This can be yours, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's eye candy, you know, it's like anything else you gotta have, yeah. you gotta have the eye candy to bring them in. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, just let the website do its own thing. Uh, you know, but just having a nice presentation, uh, I, I think is, is, is the, the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely have video on mine and a form, but I've been messing with it <laughs> on and off all year long, all, all the, always. And I mean, I accidentally messed it up. I changed the theme and it messed oh, the whole no. thing up. Yes. And I had Googled about changing the themes and it sounded like it'd be fine. No, it wasn't. So I had to go, yeah. I had to just go repair it. And then I started simplifying it and moving things and, um, yeah, but I definitely want to connect with you at another time on my you're on, are, you're on WordPress. I take it you're on WordPress. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people try to stay away from themes uh, and, and divs, but uh, that's no problem. We, we can always go back and, and start it from scratch. Uh, because with, with uh, starting it from scratch, uh, Google and everything, so I'm going to get nerdy on you. Uh, so it's easier when it's just plain text, uh, less you know coding, less garbage, more verbiage. Google will understand better okay. and place you higher. The uh -huh. more it has to read in between the lines, the more it has to figure out and think, it's going to mm. think something that it's not. Mm. So you always want to be very clear and, and, and to the point of what it is that you do okay. uh, when, when you're doing the, the coding. And just always make sure you use your H1 tags, your H2 tags, um, so that because that tells gen general what is it that you do. Uh, and uh, uh, when I go on websites and I see like uh, keywords are being used for H1, I'm just like, no, it's like, use your, put your name on there, put, use your H1 as your name. That's, that's your heading. That's your announcement. That's, okay. your, that's your heading one. That's your announcement. That's, that's use that, you know, DJ run that on H1 okay. on H2, you know, put whatever county you're in or whatever problem you're in uh, that you're trying to solve uh, that the client is, is looking to get solved. But use that as, as always, rule of thumb is your H1 is use, you know, DJ run that at, and then H2 would be, you know, North California, Bay California, or whatever you want to, uh, your location. Okay. So that when, when you Google it, it comes out real fast because okay. now you're on H1 and you're H2. Okay. Awesome. That's helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, cool. Well, how can we um, find you online and best support you? <laughs> Uh, the easiest is just Google DJ KYD or just KYD in general. Uh, okay. And I'm all, everywhere. Okay, great. And cool. if you, you need help with the websites, anything like that, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you out. You got my phone number. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the series and being um, on the show. And um, Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank everybody. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. <laughs> Until next yes. time. Bye.